So hello everyone, uh, welcome to the second part of the day. It's been a very, very strong and intense day. And uh, I think during this uh, part of the session, uh, we have a great promise of spectacular presentations. And it's my truly honor and privilege to be able to present our keynote speaker for the opening of this uh, session. Mediana Povich, and uh, I know Mediana, well, I had the privilege to know Mediana a few years ago. She is a Serbian Spanish astrophysicist. She uh, works in galaxy formation and evolution at the Ethiopian Space Science and Technology Institute, but she has worked in, in developing in astronomy, in science, education in different parts of Africa. She has uh, several different awards uh, for, for her, her work in the field. And uh, she, I think she has the, the heart in the same place as uh, all of us do, believing that education, science, and technology is the way to build a, a better place for everyone, no matter where in this planet you were born. She is a, a very strong presence and personality. Uh, I would say that uh, for today we have we, we have uh, the beginning with with the true force of nature. I'm really very proud to to have met uh, Miriana, and uh, very honored that uh, she's here with us and can share some of her uh, examples of uh, personal fight, resilience, persistency, and uh, endurance with uh, a good spirit and good examples to everyone. Miriana, thank you very much for accepting. Uh, our invitation and uh, the floor is yours for uh, one hour. I will let you know when you when you have uh, 10 to 15 minutes left so that you can interact with people and you can dazzle us with the work you've been developing in astronomy education for development in Africa. The floor Thank is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Rosa, really for your introduction and especially for invitation and also to you, Gustavo, and uh, all the organizing committee for organizing one more year um, uh, this conference, uh, which is really fundamental, very, very important uh, for teachers and all uh, scientific uh, uh, community. Um, the privilege is really mine to be uh, here with uh, all of you. Um, as I said, I, I, uh, this is my second year to attend uh, the conference and uh, last year I, I saw uh, how really uh, important the conference is. So thank you very much for inviting me to give a talk. I will try to share my screen. Um, can, you, can you see my screen? We see your screen, but not in presentation mode yet. Mm, yes, let me try. Okay. It works now? Yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect, yes. Uh, good, so uh, good uh, afternoon, good morning, uh, good evening uh, to all of you, depending where, uh, where you are. Uh, so as uh, Rosa mentioned, uh, I will be um, uh, giving a brief uh, overview about the astronomy education and the importance of astronomy education for development in Africa. Um, and... Um, uh, I would like to start with uh, reminding us about uh, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So uh, when I uh, refer to developments uh, in Africa or across the, uh, the, 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 the world, uh, I do refer on um, these 17 sustainable development goals uh, and um, uh, to the global general effort and then the effort of each uh, country uh, to achieve these goals that uh, in a certain way are uh, really a, a big um, uh, objective and in a certain way uh, ideal that, uh, that uh, we have. Um, and uh, when we come to the point of uh, how we can really combat or fight fight poverty in the long term. Um, uh, I think it's really the moment to, to change a bit the scope of what, um, uh, what are the principal uh, uh, methods and measures how we can uh, deal with the poverty uh, in the long term. And those fields that I mentioned uh, here, that, that I raised here, that Rosa mentioned a bit as well, uh, is that uh, education is really a fundamental key 
um, uh, element in uh, uh, dealing with uh, poverty and uh, combating poverty, and then a fundamental key um, to uh, um, uh, contribute to the science development, technological development, innovation as well. And these are the fundamental points uh, if we really want to deal with the poverty in the long term. Uh, in the same time, uh, we cannot do that uh, without really uh, involving the whole population. So empowering women and girls is really fundamental. And um, uh, independently on where we are, what I always like to remind all of us is that uh, poverty is not really a problem only of um, Africa or other um, uh, continents and countries that are exposed to poverty and extreme poverty. Uh, it's really a problem of all of us, independently where we are. Uh, in the world because uh, wherever that we are in one way or another we are shaping this world how it will be in the present and then in future time as well so in one way or another we can all contribute that uh, in future our world uh, will be a better place and not necessarily we need to be in africa or in another country that i as i said is exposed to to poverty wherever that we are there are methods and possibilities that we can live in a more um let's say um a responsible way. And I would say that astronomy and space science really shown up to now to be important tools for development uh, or con to contribute to these uh, uh, four or five points that I raised uh, here. And I will just um, uh, highlight four of the points. There are many others. How astronomy uh, is actually an important tool to contribute to development and to achieving the sustainable development goals. So the first thing is that it's one of the most multidisciplinary sciences. So we know that astronomy is, uh, this is the very well known image um, uh, uh, from the IAU, where you can see that astronomy is a mix of so many sciences. On one side, fundamental sciences such as physics, maths, biology, we have astrobiology, astrogeology, astrochemistry, and so on, but then also computer sciences, um, um, uh, engineering, material sciences, but also also the social sciences and humanities, uh, such as uh, uh, anthropology, ethnology, religions, history. So it means that uh, through astronomy, we can actually contribute to the development of all of these fields that I just uh, mentioned. In the same time, we also know that astronomy is one of the really powerful tools for both uh, promoting education and promote science uh, within the children and young people. And I always like to raise uh, the, my personal um, 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 experience with, uh, for example, street children uh, uh, that I worked with in Tanzania, Rwanda, uh, a little bit in Ghana as well, in South Africa, where I saw actually uh, the power, how astronomy can really attract even children that are totally uh, out of the educational system. And every time we start speaking about astronomy, their attention will be there, uh, will be there and their curiosity, um, having uh, the same questions that we all have, such as uh, where do we come from, uh, uh, what are the stars, uh, what is the moon or the sun. Um, also, every time that we have a, a development of new instruments, new generation telescopes, astronomy is contributing, it's one of the leading sciences to bring uh, strong technological developments and innovation. And uh, in the same time, more and more, we uh, are now hearing about astronomy for diplomacy, astronomy for the peace as well, because um, uh, we do have uh, very large collaborations uh, that include uh, uh, tens of countries uh, from different continents. And we have SKA that is one of really great examples, no? where we are talking about uh, uh, infrastructure development, science development for basically 50 years, and where you have a huge collaboration of uh, different international uh, partners. Then uh, um, uh, we can also remind us, uh, if we speak about astronomy, uh, importance of astronomy for the society, uh, what is the connection of astronomy and the digital revolution in which we are currently living? And we saw the importance of digital revolution um, in the last one year and a half since COVID started. So Wi-Fi, the idea behind Wi-Fi actually came um, uh, through astronomy research and the study of the black holes, and then um, uh, computing 
communication, GPS, imaging are all very important aspects of the digital revolution. And uh, for those uh, to really work as they are working nowadays, uh, the grid computing, satellite communications, atomic clocks, and then CCDs uh, uh, that are all uh, in one way or another contributed to those fields that I mentioned here that are uh, fundamental for the digital revolution, astronomy contributed significantly to the development of all of these. Uh, the CCD cameras are the cameras that have been developed in astronomy for observing uh, celestial sources such as stars, galaxies, and nowadays every single Android mobile phone has a small CCD camera. And thanks to that, you can take pictures and then use these pictures to send information wherever that uh, the person is. And then uh, astronomy also contributed uh, significantly to the big data. Since we are dealing nowadays with uh, large surveys and mappings of the sky, where we are having millions of stars and galaxies, uh, uh, we contributed significantly to what, what is called the, the data science, the big data, uh, as well through the development of different uh, codes, uh, uh, analysis uh, methods, statistical methods for the um, 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 analysis of the big uh, data. And in future, uh, astronomy will contribute even more uh, with uh, uh, different initiatives that are there and the new generation telescopes, such as the SKA, and only from the SKA, the square kilometer array that, uh, that is based in Africa and then Australia as well, uh, we expect really the revolution in terms of the data flow and we expect about 100,000 times faster data flow than what we currently have in the whole world. So that will bring a really a very strong revolution in different fields of our society, such as computer sciences, engineering, renewable energies, and not only the fundamental research in astronomy. So if all of this uh, uh, is correct, uh, uh, then we can also ask uh, why Africa cannot uh, contribute more from um, uh, uh, astronomy uh, development and research, especially taking into account that uh, Africa has really a huge potential for astronomy development, taking into account uh, a large population of young people, very motivated and very bright people. And then in the same time, the large areas of the dark sky and uh, small light pollution that you can uh, see here on this uh, map where we can uh, see the, the light pollution across the world. Uh, this is on one side unfortunate, as we know, because we have still, it means that we still have a large fraction of people that doesn't have access to the electricity, uh, like in Ethiopia, where we have uh, almost 70% of people still that uh, doesn't have access to the electricity. Um, uh, but uh, uh, we do expect that that will uh, change in future across the continent. But what is important is that we those uh, uh, parts of Africa that uh, show to be good, um, uh, possible good uh, future astronomical site for uh, astronomical development and research or, or in other fields of science, through the conservation of these areas, we can also use them for uh, different social economical benefits uh, of, of the continent. And actually this fact opened uh, the possibility for the SKA uh, that I mentioned previously to be developed. And we can use as examples also other countries like Chile, Spain with Canary Islands, uh, South Africa, uh, or uh, USA with uh, Hawaii, uh, where we that these four are the four principal uh, countries where we have the best astronomical sites currently. Uh, with a um, large number of uh, installed observatories that are all international collaborations. And those countries really benefited through the direct access to the best uh, data, uh, the, the high-tech uh, technology, the high-tech um, uh, sector that was developed, both public and private in the country, uh, new uh, empl uh, uh, employment opportunities and so on, benefited through and as I said, infrastructure development uh, in uh, uh, improving social and economical uh, status. So if uh, once again, all of this is, is a fact, then we can really say it's time for Africa. We can um, uh, really, we really don't have any more excuses asking a question, 
why uh, astronomy shall be there in Africa when we can see how many other countries can really benefit from the scientific uh, uh, research, uh, uh, investment in education and then technological development as well. And as I said, through, uh, through uh, astronomy. So this becomes uh, the continental uh, vision and uh, there are many continental initiatives now. I will just mention some of them, uh, the, the principal ones. So the African Union also has this vision that the space science, including astronomy, is becoming very important for achieving sustainable development goals, basically fundamental. And we cannot avoid in future investments in space science because the space-based data are becoming uh, uh, basically the essential part of our daily life. So uh, in 2015, African Union uh, came with the post-development uh, uh, agen agenda after the Millennium Goals in order to achieve sustainable development goals that we mentioned. And uh, um, science, technology, innovation uh, have been recognized as the second pillar, uh, uh, including the use of space and geospatial technologies. That then uh, brought to the establishment of the establishment of the African Space Agency in 2018, that is currently under the, the development. And then also the first uh, space um, African space strategy, where again, space science and astronomy have been raised as important fields. Uh, recently, the African Union, uh, in collaboration with uh, Space um, uh, in Africa, um, uh, um, launched uh, several surveys uh, in order to uh, um, get the feedback from African countries regarding the importance of space uh, in um, uh, their context, you know, importance of space and then uh, astronomy uh, as well. Uh, in 2018, uh, we published uh, a small uh, paper in Nature Astronomy. Uh, it was a collaboration between uh, more than 20 countries uh, with a large number of, uh, of colleagues across the continent and then uh, Europe as well uh, that are close collaborators. And you can see that actually many African countries are now having this vision uh, that investing in uh, as, um, uh, astronomy infrastructure is really becoming important, uh, not only, as I said, for the science development, but also social economical benefit of, of these countries. So uh, uh, a lot of progress has been done over the, the, the past 10 years, actually it was really an amazing progress, not only in astronomy, in uh, space science as well. Here you can see different uh, space agencies that have been established. Um, the majority uh, uh, in the last uh, 10 years, there are some of them that are older, like the South African Space Agency, Egyptian, uh, uh, Algerian, and then from Morocco uh, as well, and uh, Nigeria. But the, the others uh, are uh, quite uh, uh, recent. So um, a lot of, um, as I said, progress has been done. A lot uh, of work has been done already thanks to, to, to our African colleagues that are really struggling uh, uh, day to day uh, to change the, the, the reality. And, uh, and then from outside, we can, we can help as much as uh, uh, possible and as, as much as needed and, and wanted as well from, from our colleagues. Um, we also have now African Astronomical Society that was really a huge step, I would say, uh, that was re-established in 2019. It became very, very dynamic, very, very vibrant uh, society. Uh, and the, the vision uh, of uh, AFAS is really to become a voice of astronomy and science development across the continent and to really bring the people that are working in different fields of astronomy development. So here you can see some of the committees, such as the Science Committee, the Outreach Committee, recently established African Network of Women in Astronomy that I will mention a bit uh, later. And uh, you can see uh, 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 a big group of people here uh, that uh, from different African countries, I think more than 20 countries have been uh, covered uh, uh, from the continent. We still have about half of the continent where we do not have any astronomy development. So it's always important to keep that in mind and to think about the strategies, how we can really uh, bring uh, um, astronomy uh, to, to the whole uh, continent, which is not an easy task, but uh, but I'm, I'm I'm sure it will uh, it will come. Um, so uh, other committees are there as well, like education committee that is a small committee uh, uh, just starting uh, membership com membership committee and and so on. 
Um, then uh, here is the summary of different initiatives. I will not have time to go through all of them, but it's just a bit to show you how many things are actually going there. The majority of these initiatives are currently focused on human capacity development, human capacity building, and starting a bit with contribution to the technology development uh, as well. Uh, uh, but as I said, human capacity development and education uh, are really two fundamental uh, uh, aspects. And then through that, uh, uh, also the science development. So we have uh, data that in the last five years have been uh, uh, amazingly active uh, with the funding coming from the UK, from the uh, Newton's funds. Um, uh, and it was, um, uh, it is the, the project that uh, uh, is focused on the development of radio astronomy uh, and development in Africa through radio astronomy as well. The ISP from Sweden uh, also contributed a lot to astronomy development and uh, making the network be be between East African countries, um, uh, especially supporting master PhD students. AFIPS uh, is uh, focused on the planetary sciences, space sciences as as well, uh, again, uh, quite active initiative. Um, then AFAS, I already mentioned, uh, OED is there that over the last uh, 10 years has been um, uh, doing really an amazing work. And we can definitely say that the contribution of the OED and then other uh, projects from um, uh, uh, South Africa, such as NASP or AIMS, uh, um, really contributed significantly to this uh, strong development of astronomy in other parts of the continent out of South Africa by training the very first master PhD students in astronomy that then uh, went back to their countries and then continued with, uh, with astronomy development. Uh, ASFAP, the African Strategy for Fundamental and Applied Physics, is a new strategy. I will mention it a bit um, uh, later, but a very important one. And then we have a few projects like Materna, uh, 5A, uh, Astronomy and Astrophysics, um, um, uh, Rising Astronomy and Astrophysics across Africa, that are two initiatives in collaboration with uh, Europe, uh, uh, um, with several African countries, again, focused on the human capacity building and that were proposed for the funding through the European uh, Commission. Uh, I will mention also uh, the uh, as one, I will give as one of the examples uh, Ethiopia because uh, that's uh, where I've been based uh, uh, in the last uh, five years um, uh, fully and um, uh, I will go through different examples that we are uh, different activities that we are uh, uh, doing in in Ethiopia. So I will just mention the, the ESSTI briefly, the Ethiopian Space Science and Technology Institute. And in line with what I mentioned previously, we have more and more countries that are starting with astronomy development. Uh, Ethiopia established this institute in 2016. It was the very first institute of such kind in the country, but also in all East African region. And uh, you can see here the motto uh, of the institute that we explore the universe for the benefit of our people. So the vision is really a uh, long-term vision. You know? uh, there is really a vision that through astronomy, through the space science and technology, uh, Ethiopia can really improve some of the main challenges that uh, it's facing and then improve its, uh, in the longer term, its uh, so uh, social, economical and uh, environmental status as well. Uh, you can see that um, uh, there are different departments. Astronomy and astrophysics is only one of them, but then uh, space geodesy is there, remote sensing with Earth observations, um, the space physics as well, and then all the sector that is more focused on uh, the satellite technologies. Uh, and um, uh, that is one of the aspects that Ethiopia is actually uh, putting a lot of efforts in developing the the, uh, the space sector and then um, uh, uh, use uh, the space-based data, the satellite data for improving the agricultural production, the access to the water, and then for improving also the, uh, the access to the natural resources uh, and uh, uh, through that, the, the access to the renewable energies uh, and development of renewable energies uh, as well. So um, uh, the question, uh, the, the principal question that is related with the title of this talk, uh, how astronomy education can contribute uh, to development in Africa or achieving sustainable development uh, goals, 
uh, I'm not trying to say here that astronomy is more important than any other science. Uh, but um, uh, there is a, 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 a significant uh, um, a contribution of astronomy to the to the sustainable development goals as well that we shall not forget and that it's important that we highlight uh, as well. So um, uh, astronomy, I would say, is uh, directly related to uh, the, the very first fundamental sustainable development goals, a goal that uh, that is related with astronomy is really SDG 4, uh, uh, that is quality education. Uh, you remember at the beginning, I mentioned uh, uh, that uh, uh, we've seen how much astronomy can be an important tool to uh, motivate uh, uh, students for education and science and to bring them the curiosity, the critical thinking as well that I didn't mention. Um, and uh, it's definitely related with the sustainable development goals for. But then uh, uh, through uh, SDG 4, uh, in different ways, uh, we also contribute uh, in direct or, or uh, in more direct or indirect way to many other sustainable development goals, uh, such as the gender equality, renewable energy, uh, the SDG A that is related with the jobs and economic growth, the innovation infrastructure, uh, reduced inequalities, and so on. And then uh, in a longer term, in an indirect way, also to the uh, SDG um, uh, 1 that is related with uh, uh, the vision that we really uh, uh, remove poverty uh, uh, in the world uh, uh, in future. So I will now, in the second part of the talk, go through different aspects, first focusing on the um, SDG 4 and uh, different, like how through astronomy we can contribute to SDG 4 at different levels, going from the postgraduate uh, programs to the outreach, and then uh, uh, how through that we actually uh, can contribute to all of these SDGs that I mentioned, giving the examples of different activities that are going on. So the first uh, uh, um, uh, activity related with astronomy education that I would like to mention is the contribution to the higher education. And I will give examples from Ethiopia and East Africa. Uh, so in Ethiopia uh, at the ESSTI, we are now running the postgraduate program in master uh, PhD in astronomy and astrophysics in other fields uh, of uh, space science that I mentioned previously. Uh, that we have different departments as, at the ESSTI. Uh, uh, there are uh, postgraduate programs as well. So these are the very first master PhD students in astronomy that we are training in the, uh, in the country. Uh, and uh, what is very important uh, is that all of these uh, students are already attached to some of the public universities. So here you can see the current numbers. So the number of students that already graduated. So the program started in 2014, 15. And you can see, as I said, the number of students that graduated, the current number of students that we have in PhD MSc. Uh, and from the uh, ESSTI and Ethiopia, we are also having very strong uh, uh, connections uh, with uh, other countries in the East African regions. And we uh, do offer support uh, through the lecturing and student supervision. Uh, um, again, master PhD students, uh, student supervision in Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania, and then uh, Kenya uh, as well, uh, also in collaboration with um, uh, South Africa. So, um, here you can see some of our very first students. Uh, here are Jerusalem, Betty, that are the very first two women with the MSc in uh, astrophysics in Ethiopia. Uh, here is Teleke, who is one of our PhD students uh, who just uh, uh, defended his uh, PhD, and this is our uh, after his PhD defense. And um, these are the current. Uh, projects that we are running in extragalactic astronomy by studying in different projects that I will not go in uh, in detail, so don't worry. Uh, so these 10-11 um, projects are related with the study of the galaxies and the students that you can see here are uh, from Ethiopia, but also from uh, Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania. And uh, um, uh, as I mentioned previously, all of them 
are already attached to some of the public universities in the, those countries that I just mentioned. Uh, they are lecturers already there. And once they finish their master PhD, they will go back to their university and continue uh, training, teaching many other students uh, and in this way, directly, we can contribute through the MSc PhD program and all the postgraduate program, we can contribute directly to uh, improving the level of higher education in, uh, in Ethiopia and then East Africa as well through astronomy. But when, I, when we say through astronomy, so even if um, uh, in all of these projects, there is a fundamental research uh, regarding properties of galaxies or evolution of the universe and galaxies across the cosmic time. All of these students uh, get so many other skills in terms of the computer science, uh, computer skills, in terms of the programming, in terms of the uh, managing uh, big data uh, analysis and the st statistical analysis of data, um, scientific writing, communication, and so on and so on. And all of these skills are fundamental uh, uh, for all the work that they will do once they go back to their universities that I mentioned uh, previously. Actually, uh, uh, those who already went back to their universities, like Tseleke, who, who is now uh, teaching uh, uh, in Ethiopia, um, uh, in Addis, or uh, uh, Asrate, or uh, the Jene that are also teaching in the more uh, uh, remote uh, areas in, in Ethiopia, uh, they do not teach only astronomy courses. They do, they do teach other physics uh, uh, courses uh, as well, but applying all the knowledge and skills that uh, they gained uh, during their MSc or PhD uh, studies. Um, so uh, through this fundamental research, uh, actually, uh, and the postgraduate program, we actually can contribute to different aspects in the long term um, uh, of the sustainable development goals. So the first is the human capacity building in general. So you are uh, getting the strong um, uh, capacity professional sector in the country, which directly is related then with the SDG 8. So Maybe not all of these people will remain in astronomy and fundamental research all their life, but the skills that they got uh, will remain there and they can use these skills uh, for contributing and benefiting the development in the country in many other aspects. Education development that I already mentioned previously and direct contribution again to the SDG 4. Then the development of astronomy and science that again is extremely important for giving the visibility to the ESSTI, to the East Africa, Africa in general, because rarely uh, when uh, uh, we speak, uh, when we hear about Africa, uh, speaking about Africa uh, uh, in the rest of the world, uh, rarely we will uh, hear the positive things regarding the science development. You will very often hear about the problems that are there, the difficulties that are there, the extreme poverty or the poverty. But there is a great science that is done as well, and we have to give visibility to that as well. It's extremely important. It's extremely important for changing the vision, the, the picture of the, the global community uh, society toward uh, um, the African continent and uh, the developing countries uh, in general. And then um, uh, also bringing the, the confidence no, in our young people in Africa that they can also do a great science uh, as well and publish in the best uh, scientific and astronomy journals. Through the postgraduate program, we also uh, contribute uh, uh, significantly to make stronger the international collaborations because we still don't have uh, uh, sufficient people uh, in the countries that I mentioned. And that's the fact in most of the countries in Africa where the astronomy is just starting, it means that uh, for the supervision of master PhD students, uh, there is a collaboration with other countries, the experts from Europe, from other parts, uh, from US, uh, uh, from uh, other parts of like from South Africa, so other countries across the, uh, or for example, the, the, the network that uh, uh, we are now building across the continent, so the collaborations that I mentioned uh, between the East African countries and the South Africa that are really very, very uh, encouraging. And then uh, uh, we can also uh, contribute uh, through the astronomy development. I will come to that uh, point uh, to support the technological development, the, the present one and the future one as well. 
as I said, I will come more to that. And then other parts such as the outreach, public awareness, the institutional development, and through the institutional developments, it's fundamental for actually uh, um, having strong institutions. We know that it's fundamental for the, 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 uh, the political uh, stability in the country. It's not the only parameter, but it's very important parameter. So making uh, stronger the scientific institutions in the country is extremely important for uh, the, the, the general stability uh, uh, on the longer term as well, and then for promoting peace and uh, uh, justice. Uh, one of the examples uh, how through the, the uh, postgraduate program, the research that we are doing that I mentioned previously, uh, we can contribute to different aspects that I just mentioned now is, for example, the organization of the uh, IU symposium that we hosted in 2019 uh, in Ethiopia. This was the, the third symposium to be organized in Africa in the last uh, 100 years of the IU. And uh, uh, although this was uh, purely sent scientific meeting when for the very first time we brought about 60 scientists uh, uh, from different parts of the world that work in the in the field of AGN and active galaxies but we use that opportunity also to benefit the broader um, uh, part of the community. So what we did was uh, that we develop, uh, we uh, organized the training for our early career researchers and MSc PhD students before the training, using the participants and the experts that came. We organized the teachers training uh, after the symposium. We organized the, the data session uh, training during the symposium again for the young researchers. We organized different outreach activities, visiting the public schools. Uh, this is one of the pictures that you can see. So we visited eight public schools and then organized the public event, event uh, and in total hosted about 800 students and, and children during that week. Uh, and also thanks to, to that, we now have also the very first uh, book of proceedings that um, uh, is uh, the very first book of proceedings uh, uh, for Ethiopia and for the uh, ESSTI with, um, with uh, 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 tens of different scientific uh, papers. So it was really uh, 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 impactful in, in different aspects. Um, then another point that is related with astronomy education and how we can contribute in the long term to the benefit of the society is the trainings uh, uh, not only of the master PhD students, but also our young staff members that we have at the ESSTI. So in general, the human capacity development and in the last uh, five, six years, uh, we managed to organize about um, uh, 10 uh, different schools and workshops and then different number of uh, research visits and trainings. Here you can see some of them. Um, uh, we also uh, will have uh, soon uh, the, the very first East African school in astronomy that will be um, uh, hosted uh, uh, and, and um, um, uh, done in, um, uh, in Tanzania. Uh, there is also the very first uh, sub-Saharan school in astronomy that will be organized in Uganda. Uh, both of these schools uh, were um, uh, organized for 2020, and unfortunately, we had to move it uh, already uh, uh, two times uh, due to the COVID. So through the human capacity development, once again, we contribute to um, a generation of the strong uh, uh, um, qualified uh, sector in the country, not only in astronomy, but also in engineering, in the computer sciences as well, um, and uh, uh, in, in uh, teaching as well, and in that way, uh, contributing directly to the SDG uh, 8. Uh, teachers trainings uh, uh, is also one of the aspects of the activities that is very important for us. Uh, I think uh, there are many teachers who are uh, attending this um, uh, conference uh, and this this is uh, basically I mean teachers uh, uh, we know that are the fundamental but really fundamental uh, part of all our educational system and society so we cannot speak about postgraduate program and all that I mentioned previously if we really uh, don't focus on uh, teachers, teachers trainings, and then uh, motivating, stimulating teachers 
um, how through their work they can uh, benefit, uh, they can um, uh, influence uh, uh, all the students and, uh, and children and then benefit uh, uh, our society. So uh, we also um, uh, try to, to give our contribution to, to the work that teachers are doing and to support, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, their, uh, their uh, um, uh, strengths. Um, in very often, uh, I, I had a chance to see in uh, different African countries uh, how often teachers are really struggling with their work uh, uh, because uh, not always the conditions in which the teachers are working uh, are easy. Uh, so any contribution that as scientists uh, uh, and uh, people working in uh, um, Academy, academic uh, world, we can uh, contribute to making a bit uh, uh, the, the life of teachers easier uh, uh, is really important. In that aspect, I really uh, appreciate the work that Rosa Gustavo are doing, uh, including the organization of this uh, uh, meeting uh, and all the, the colleagues of Rosa and Gustavo, and then uh, uh, all the development of all the materials and tools uh, that they have been working on uh, over the, the past uh, years. That was really very, very inspirational for many of us. Uh, the, the program in which uh, I am involved uh, is the Network for Astronomy School Education that has been uh, started by my colleague Rosa Maria Ross from Barcelona and then uh, Beatriz Garcia from Argentina. They already organized more than 100 uh, 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 different uh, courses for teachers across the, the world, but in Africa we also organized uh, uh, a different number, a number of trainings. Um, so in East African region in particular, the trainings have been organized in Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, uh, Tanzania, and then in Ghana as well we organized uh, uh, two trainings uh, uh, for teachers. So uh, uh, what is a bit the, uh, the, the peculiarity of uh, NASE is that the, the Trainings are uh, uh, practical, so through the use of recycled materials and then the, the, the materials that are cheap and that you can find easily uh, in your uh, homes, uh, we try to construct different um, uh, 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 experiments and show different uh, physical and then astrophysical uh, laws as well. So uh, we managed to interact uh, with a significant number of teachers uh, uh, up to now. Uh, the activities have been stopped a bit due to COVID, uh, and then we hope to uh, start. Rosa actually is doing uh, quite actively now, even uh, through the virtually, but we hope to start uh, uh, maybe from next year uh, to continue with in-presence um, uh, trainings uh, again. So through these, uh, through the teacher's training, uh, the idea is that through the teacher's training, the same as the, the, uh, the Nucleo is having, the Galileo teachers as well, is that through teachers, we can then improve uh, the education for, for all of our uh, uh, children. So once again, uh, the, 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 the importance of the work that teachers are, are doing is uh, really, really fundamental. Then uh, a lot of work has been uh, done and is going constantly in terms of the um, uh, uh, activities in the schools uh, with uh, directly with children. Uh, and then uh, the outreach activities and the public awareness uh, in general. So you can see here just a list of uh, some of the activities like the Astrobus activity that has been organized uh, for three years uh, by my colleagues uh, uh, going uh, every time in different uh, with the bus in different uh, rural areas of Ethiopia interacting with children that do not have uh, much um, opportunities to, to get uh, in touch directly with, uh, with science and experiments. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, only at Entoto Observatory that I will mention a bit later. Uh, in 2000, we have constantly the visits of students and children that is really inspiring uh, uh, for us. And uh, only, for example, in 2019, we had more than 10,000 uh, children and students who visited the, the observatory. Um, uh, then um, uh, the stargazing activities organized uh, by the Ethiopian Space Science Society, and then we try to collaborate and contribute as much as we can, uh, are again the, the, the um, uh, um, 
continuous uh, activities that are there uh, in, uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, and then uh, every time that there are specific events like uh, the solar eclipse last year, the, the asteroid day and so on, we also try to, to promote astronomy among the, um, the broader uh, public. When we come to the astronomy education across Africa, there is so much going on. So a bit uh, what the summary of what I mentioned in Ethiopia, many other countries uh, uh, are doing a very similar uh, work. So new postgraduate programs uh, are now present in, uh, in different countries. Uh, here are mentioned only some of them. Uh, then uh, through AFAS, uh, now the outreach uh, education committees are there doing again really a great uh, job. The number of amateur astronomical society increased across the continent. Here you can see the map of, uh, uh, of a large number of, uh, uh, of those, and they also contribute significantly uh, to the, the promoting astronomy and astronomy education. And then strong support has been also offered to MSc, PhD students, uh, and different activities through the NASP AIMS in South Africa, DARA ISP that I already uh, mentioned uh, previously. Uh, then also astronomy uh, is really an effective tool uh, for promoting uh, STEM. Uh, and um, uh, in 2019, we started with my colleagues from uh, CWIST, from the uh, Society of Ethiopian Women in Science and Technology, uh, initiative that is called uh, STEM um, uh, uh, for Girls in Ethiopia, with the idea to interact with the secondary school uh, girls and to try to understand, to, on one side, to promote role models Models, so the women that are professional in some of the uh, STEM fields, the second is uh, to try to uh, um, uh, promote STEM fields by through these women who are sharing their experience and what they are doing and what was uh, uh, their way to convert them into professors or engineers uh, and so on. And then also to understand what are the principal reasons that we don't have more women, more girls and women in science in Ethiopia, because the current number, including all sciences, is only around 10% um, of women that are scientists. And then when we come to the fundamental sciences, the number is even lower. So uh, until now, uh, unfortunately, we were stopped by COVID. But during 2019, we managed to interact with about uh, 1,000 secondary school girls. And we started also organizing the workshops for teachers, but uh, uh, to, to, to have discussions with teachers, why is it important to promote STEM fields among girls and to motivate more girls to do STEM? Because teachers are those who are interacting with girls on a daily basis. Uh, and we also uh, started a survey. Uh, uh, it's a volunteer survey that girls are participating with in order to understand better what are the principal factors. And what we learned until now is that actually the lack of the support uh, and then the lack of the information, the support in society, in schools, but also in the family, plus the lack of information about the, the job opportunities, for example, the study opportunities in, in terms of the STEM fields are some of the fundamental problems among girls why they're not choosing uh, STEM. But also uh, that, that's beside the poverty that we know already that is affecting much more girls than, uh, than uh, uh, boys. Uh, and here you can see some of the, the, the pictures from the activities we are normally trying to interact with a smaller uh, group of girls around uh, 30 maximum, so with 20, 30 girls, so that we can really uh, get closer to them and uh, uh, get to the, you know, make the, the, the ambient uh, with more confidence so that we can really discuss more about uh, the opportunities, but also uh, challenges. Um, uh, then um, uh, this is just to remind us about the current gender gap in science where we in the world where we know that less than 30% of women uh, are scientists uh, and then uh, even less when we come to the fundamental sciences. Um, and this is uh, when we come to the African context and uh, in particular in terms of astronomy, um, uh, the, uh, we saw that there are so many 
uh, activities and progress in astronomy development uh, over the last uh, 10 years. So we want to guarantee that women are there, are present in all these, uh, in an active uh, uh, way uh, in all of these developments. So uh, recently we established under the African Astronomical Society, uh, African Network of Women in Astronomy as one of its uh, committees. It was uh, publicly uh, launched in uh, January this year. Here you can see our uh, uh, coordinating uh, committee. And by now we have uh, more than 90 members from 30 countries that are marked uh, in this map on the bottom. And uh, what we can say is that 20% of our members are men, which is extremely important. And we uh, motivate the participation of men because we cannot change the reality of empowering women if we don't do it all together. And what is uh, important is that uh, more than 80% of our members are actually early career researchers. So MSc, PhD students, which means that the need for AFNOA is really high uh, so that through AFNOA, AFNOA and through the network, we can really contribute to, uh, to we can um, um, uh, uh, support the young women and make sure that they don't leave the, the science. So up to now, we organized the, since January free virtual trainings uh, uh, regarding the uh, um, uh, presentations, uh, how to improve your presentation, how to improve your CV. Um, and then we also organized a small activity in March to get uh, feedback from the uh, female community in astronomy across the continent and give the visibility to the work that they are doing. We organized uh, several uh, discussions, uh, session, uh, discussion sessions on different conferences, including uh, the last uh, African EU uh, uh, summit. Uh, uh, in science and uh, uh, innovation uh, to discuss about the status of women uh, in science. And recently we submitted also a proposal for supporting uh, girls and women, uh, the education of girls, and then the research work uh, of women in astronomy, space science, and data science on the continent. That if approved, it will be the project for three years. And we uh, uh, hope to really benefit a lot the continent and the female population through, through that. So through this, we can, and the previous, uh, we can give as an example for really contributing to the uh, SDG 5 regarding the, the gender uh, equality. So I think I'm running out of time. So I will. Uh, yeah, uh, you have uh, thirteen minutes, but uh, within this time, you you need to answer questions. Okay. Uh, so how much time? Sorry, I didn't hear you, Rosa. How much time do I have left? You have for... uh, thirteen. 13 minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I will, uh, yes, I want to leave some time for questions. So let me just uh, 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 leave a few more uh, uh, um, minutes uh, and I will uh, finalize. So um, this is, uh, I would just like to now uh, briefly summarize uh, how through the astronomy education that I mentioned previously will benefit other, uh, um, uh, development of other SDGs. Uh, so the first is uh, the contribution to the uh, infrastructure development industry and innovation through the development of astronomical uh, observatories, telescopes, and instruments. In Ethiopia, we have now the small observatory, but Ethiopia also has dreams to become one of the uh, astronomical sites, taking into account its geography with very high mountains, being close to the equator. So the site testing uh, started at, uh, at La Libela, and through that, we can really contribute to the infrastructure and technological development in, in the future. And similar is the case in other countries, you can see here the current uh, um, uh, developments that are going on in radio astronomy in terms of agri um, in terms of infrastructure, in gamma rays, uh, in Namibia, and then in optical astronomy, different countries across the continent that are starting with uh, site testing and then development of uh, optical uh, observatories. Uh, so thanks to that, we now have uh, uh, the, the best data coming from Africa, uh, uh, in particular from South Africa, uh, thanks to development of Mirkat, like this picture that you can see from the center of the Milky Way, that is one of the best that we have uh, currently, or uh, from the uh, giant elliptical galaxy that is here in optical, and that with Mirkat now we can observe uh, these in details, these huge radio lobes with, again, more details than than, um, uh, um, um, in previous uh, uh, years. Uh, 
uh, through astronomy uh, education, we can also contribute to the climate action and then uh, renewable energies. In the first case, uh, through the site testing and protection conservation of astronomical sites, like as I mentioned in Ethiopia, through the Lalibela site testing in, um, in uh, Tanzania, through the possible Kilimanjaro site testing in Kenya, through also site testing that is going on in optical astronomy or Algeria, Egypt, and then many other countries that are going uh, on through the site testing that is uh, also related with either optical or radio astronomy development, then through the protection of dark skies as well, and then different initiatives, and then um, the development of the new generation telescopes uh, such as SK will definitely contribute to the development of the renewable energies as well, plus through the solar physics uh, research uh, that is definitely fundamental one. Uh, another important aspect uh, is uh, the that I already mentioned a little bit um, uh, is a contribution through the education, through the postgraduate programs, uh, and then different uh, projects to the um, uh, promotion and uh, strengthening the collaboration. So here you can see just an example of different collaborations that have been uh, uh, through research, master PhD projects, uh, and then technology development uh, established uh, between Ethiopia and then all of these uh, institutions. Um, then uh, 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 astronomy education is again fundamental for the um, uh, pro for promoting peace through the collaborations that I mentioned previously, but also development of different uh, space policies and strategic plans. So, for example, in Ethiopia, uh, uh, in the last few years, we wait, uh, we worked on the very first Ethiopian space policy. Uh, now the work is going on in terms of the development of the uh, uh, roadmap, and then the African strategy for fundamental and applied physics is a new initiative that doesn't include only astrophysics. Astrophysics cosmology is one of the working groups, but the idea is that in the next, it's a big uh, continental and international initiative as well. Uh, and the idea is that in the next uh, two, three years, we come with a strategy um, and with the feedback coming from all African countries, how through physics, all fields of physics, including astronomy, we can actually benefit in a longer term, the social and uh, um, uh, economical development of the continent. Uh, uh, other examples uh, uh, I can mention the later on through the questions, uh, such as astronomy for uh, um, uh, astronomy in Africa survey that we are currently working on, or the preparations that we are doing uh, for the General Assembly, very first General Assembly uh, of the IU that will be hosted in 2024 by South Africa. So all in all, with this, we can uh, really contribute uh, in a long term to reduce in uh, inequality among uh, in the world among the countries by uh, uh, bringing astronomy uh, developments to, to the African uh, countries and then uh, uh, also uh, all together to fight the poverty uh, in the in the long term together with many other initiatives in other fields of science. So if you would like to join some of the uh, initiatives that I mentioned, you can uh, get in touch with me. I also put here uh, some of other um, contacts and you can join the, the ASPAP uh, working group in astrophysics and uh, cosmology or contribute to the Astronomy in Africa survey. And I will stop here with uh, these uh, words um, and uh, give you thanks for your attention. Um, and uh, I'm open for, I'm, I'm ready for the questions if, if, uh, if there are. Thank you. Wow, that was uh, really an amazing presentation. Thank you very, very much, Mirjana, for, for that. I think, um, I don't know if it was more uh, inspiring or a, a bit overwhelming thinking of, the amount of work that has been done uh, in the last uh, few years. And actually we have a question here from Vanessa Navarrete, who says, what is the minimum team to begin with this revolution uh, and the professional profile? So I think Ethiopia is leading kind of a revolution together with many countries that you have uh, mentioned, uh, but, Okay, if, if another country was to replicate what you did, what would be the recipe? I think this is the, the direction of this question. Uh, 
Yes, well, what I what I believe that the, the two fundamental recipes are, uh, first is that you have people, as I mentioned at one, one point, maybe it was not uh, uh, fully clear, I fully believe that the initiatives have to come from inside. So uh, from outside, as I said, uh, um, I'm not originally, I, I work now in Ethiopia for the last five years. Before that, I was collaborating with different African countries for basically the last 15 years. But uh, the initiatives uh, uh, are always coming from inside. You know? And then I was supporting uh, our colleagues that are working uh, day to day uh, in, in different parts of Africa. So the first is that uh, we have motivated, inspired people in the country uh, that uh, are there to uh, uh, to push, to move, uh, uh, and to bring the initiatives uh, for the science development. And the second fundamental point is that uh, uh, there is a support from the decision makers, because if the support from decision makers is not there, then it doesn't mean if the first point, so if these two points are there, uh, like is the case in Ethiopia, then you can have a uh, very strong, uh, significant uh, growth, uh, continuous growth uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that can um, not easily, because nothing is easy, especially when you are starting from zero, but uh, uh, it can go. If one of these two is missing, if you have uh, the, the political uh, vision, but you don't have people to do the job, or you have people to do the job, but then you don't have political support, the things become uh, much more difficult. So we do have these kind of examples on the continent as well. And some of the countries, uh, maybe like uh, Uganda, Rwanda, um, even Tanzania, no, it's a bit uh, uh, the vision that I have. If the political support would be more there, then uh, I think the, the progress in astronomy would be much faster as well, because we definitely do have very skilled people, very motivated people, hardworking people and colleagues that are there. They do need uh, much support because the number of people, qualified people is still low. But these are the two fundamental points in my, in my, in my opinion. Then, of course, everything else is important. You know, the experience, knowledge, funding, uh, 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 facilities, and so on and so on. But it's a bit uh, secondary part in, in terms of the, the other two that I mentioned. Yeah, uh, as Norali says, it was well said, Miriam, and I hope we can learn from, from what you did, and I hope you can uh, maybe be the catalyzer for efforts that are in the field already, and that uh, maybe can, uh, can help enhance, because sometimes it's overwhelming, the need, and you don't know where to start. So, you know, collaborations with AFAS, with yourself, with the groups like ours, maybe can speed up, because... I, I, I have been working with a few countries in Africa in the last uh, three years, and I have a feeling that there is a, a burst of uh, uh, competences coming, it's, it's very skilled new generations coming from Africa. And it's it just a little bit of uh, support that is necessary to, to steer it in the right direction, uh, avoiding, uh, avoiding the, the, the mistakes of the past. So, Yes. Sometimes I think it's important to tell us what to do because otherwise we're wasting our effort in 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 the wrong uh, in the wrong place. Not that it's not going to be good; it's good, but uh, it's important uh, I, that voices like yours are heard. I agree with you that networking is fundamental. The teamwork is really fundamental. I mean, uh, uh, I was lucky to observe that, you know, uh, through the OED, through all of these initiatives that I mentioned previously, you know, that really, I mean, uh, we can be extremely motivated, but uh, uh, um, one person cannot do much. So definitely, independently on, on our motivation and uh, how inspired we, we are. So the, the teamwork, the collaborations are really fundamental. So the uh, I mean, I think that the, the networks, different networks that now we are having more and more on the continental level, on the regional levels, like uh, East African Astronomical Society, different um, uh, OED regional offices are extremely, extremely important and definitely fundamental for all these fast progress that was there uh, in development of astronomy over the last 10 years in Africa. Hmm. Well, um... 
Norali also has Norali made several comments. I, I suggest you to to, to read the, the 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 comments, and I I think that uh, you give a lot of food for thought uh, for many people, and uh, we, we will make sure that when your specific talk is well, all the talks, but yours in particular on YouTube, will make great publicity of it, so that others can can follow uh, the lead. Not easy to follow. <laughs> To follow the the path that you have taken, uh, but uh, maybe in in other countries the same uh, good uh, collection of things are going to be put together. Miriana, thank you so much for this uh, very strong and valuable uh, presentation, and uh, I do hope uh, that we can continue counting with you to enrich our meetings and uh, enlighten our network. Thank you. Thank you, Rosa and Gustavo, for making me a part of uh, this meeting and, and to all participants. Uh, thank you.